the East End, mate. Everyone round here's got a tall tale to tell about the old gangsters. I've heard them all. The blood. Please. The guts. The glory. John Morgan's suave. Um, he would, he's a good businessman. Um, in, the, in the proper world, um, had he had a different education, probably he'd be into stocks and shares and things like that, and he'd be very successful. But he's an old gangster, mm. and he lives in Turkey, where, in fact, I've got a house, so we kind of relate a little bit to yeah. it. Um, and he just, in his back of his mind, without telling anybody else at the, at the moment, he doesn't want to do it anymore. He wants to be out of it, and he wants somebody else to take over. And basically, it, he comes back um, initially to present a cheque to a charity that he um, uh, uh, supports, mm. and he comes back every year to, to do something like that. And he, he donates a hundred thousand pound or so every time he comes back. Yeah. And he comes back this time to do that, but at the back of it all is to tell people that he's actually retiring. Look, I'm thinking about jacking it all in. What? Yeah. Retirement. You retire, that'll be the day. I'm serious, Rich. I always thought you'd be the actor there to drag off the stage, <laughs> kicking and fighting. Well, it's not set in stone, but I am considering it. What about the business? Hey, as per usual. Damien Osborne's not going to be wanting to give up his bit of the action, but, um, well, there's going to have to be changes. Changes? Yeah, well, let's call it a facelift. Yeah? If I do go through with it, I need... I need you two to be working together. So Sadie is John Morgan's wife. Um, very strong character. Um, the role was written for me by Adam Stephen Kelly. He and he know I've known him for years, and obviously Jonathan as well. So yeah. <laughs> being my husband, yeah. so they kind of wanted the character its character to be a bit bigger, mm -hmm. have a bigger part, um, and just be stronger. Like you know, I'm with this sort of alpha male, and he kind of needs it back as well. You know, he needs mm -hmm. somebody strong, and um, you know they have a daughter who I have a really good relationship with. And I, I just think that Sadie isn't the sort of normal, archetypical sort of gangster's wife just sitting there filing her nails in the background. I mean, mm. come on, this film, she does everything, yeah. doesn't she? She's cooking a big dinner party. She's stabbing people. She's punching them. She's sticking up for her husband and her daughter till the bitter end. And I, you know, I think she's really, really ballsy in this. Mm. So it was a great role for me to do. I hope she's on time tonight. Oh, Katie. Of course you will. Oh, you know what she's like. It takes her three hours just to do her hair. Oh, I remember a time when you were like that, young lady. Well, I wasn't taking pictures of myself every two minutes. And that's a shame, because I wish you would. Oh. I just hope she realises how important this evening is. I'm sure she does. Please, don't worry about it. Just let's concentrate on this. Cheers to us. In the city we love the most. Yeah. I wanted to, uh, to do a movie with Billy. Um, you know, he's a, a great friend, almost family. Um, we've done many films together over the years. And, but I never felt I'd done one that sort of was worthy of him really because um, he's such a terrific actor and um, the idea came to do that and I thought you know what it's the turn of the decade 2020 is coming start something new mm -hmm. let's start again from scratch pretty much and make a low budget independent movie where I do all the work just like Vendetta um, not share it with other producers you know basically on this one there's no one to blame except me so I'm, I'm putting my head over the parapet and saying that um, and Janine, my wife and I, um, talked about it a lot. She was very supportive of the idea. She always is, you know, she's my biggest advocate. And, um, we, we started kicking around ideas, um, Janine, myself and Adam, who, who works with us. And, um, 
we came up with Shogun as a name. Um, you know, we were always looking to emulate those kind of 80s mini studios, Canon, Carol Co., those kind of things. And, and the, the branding that eventually materialised was very similar to those. Um, but what we wanted to focus on was was getting away from, you know, no more cheap horror movies, um, uh, no sort of people in bars in Essex screaming and swearing at each other, make sort of thrillers and action movies for the international market. Mm-hmm. Um you know, so like in a film like Nemesis, it would be very easy to fill it with actors who outside of the UK, no one can understand how they speak sort of over Cockney. Um, but if you look at Billy, for example, he's such a well-spoken actor. You know, you can hear every single word. He enunciates beautifully. Bruce Payne's the same. Nick Moran's the same. Um, so that was the mission statement really was to make really commercial action movies, thrillers, um, crime thrillers on sensible budgets that we could make work outside of just Britain. So not British movies, but films made in Britain. That was that was the idea. Um, we came up with a Shogun um, name, which we really liked. I love that kind of Japanese aesthetic as well. I like the idea of something Shogun. It sounds it's sort of like the new old fashioned, yeah. um, and it sounded strong and, and very very cool. Now, with your permission, I would like to talk about honour and. Yeah, you want to talk about honour? Hey, what is that? Oh. I- that must be honour amongst thieves. What, what was that? <laughs> oh, what, what, oh, no, I think you heard me perfectly. Still up to your same old tricks, eh, hey, John? I think, you know, Billy is one of the most charismatic people I've, I've ever met. Um, you know, and over the years, we've been everywhere you can imagine, all around the world together, we've been on holiday together, and we've met everyone from Mikhail Gorbachev to Danny DeVito together. Um, you know, we've had some real colourful adventures. Um, mm. And... Anywhere we go, he's so famous. Yeah. So famous. And bear in mind, he's mostly famous for a TV show that hasn't been on TV for 20 years, The Bill. Mm. Um, a massive show. Mm. Easy to underrate it. Um, every, every day I'm out with him, someone says, when's The Bill coming back? When are you going back into EastEnders? You know, he's, he really made an impact because he's such a good actor. Mm. It's been a while, Frank. Has it? Yeah. Shame it's not a little bit longer. Shame? No. That's not a shame. As the gentleman said, this is a private function, so if you wouldn't mind... But I do mind. I had to get a bus and two tubes to get here. So what do you want, you prick? Oh, uh, well, you see, when I heard on the grapevine... Hey, it wasn't the grapevine, it was someone you know really well. And it's not the only thing they told me. That the great John Morgan was flying in for this beautiful occasion. Well, I had to see this for myself. 100 grand out of your own pocket. Aren't you generous with your ill-gotten gains? You see, what's a shame is all these people falling for your lies and bullshit. Or maybe they just go along with your endless fucky charade. Nick, um, I think he's a great actor. We always wanted him to play that part. You know, I'd seen him play a cop, an obsessive cop, a couple of times before, and I, and I just thought he'd be perfect. He and Billy had never worked together. I don't think they'd actually met. They met for the first time at a, a boozy lunch at Langan's that I put on for them and Frank Harper just before we were supposed to shoot originally. Um, and they got on pretty well. And um, I think that you, that you really buy the antagonism between them. Yeah. Um, Bruce Payne was in Vendetta for me and also a picture I did called Age of Kill. Um, he did cameos and those. Um, love love working with Bruce, the ultimate professional. You know, he treats a day on one of my movies like he's doing a day, like a whole movie for Tarantino. <laughs> yeah, he really take. And we had endless conversations about wardrobe and script and what cravat he'd wear, what the cufflinks would be, all that kind of stuff. Um, and, and I love the fact, yeah, when people care and they want to do good stuff, it makes you care. Yeah. Um, and it brings out the best in everyone. And he um, he he did this thing with Billy on the day they shot their scene. Um, where Bruce he wouldn't meet Billy he just refused to meet him um, and he wow. said I won't meet him I won't meet him until we do the scene and Billy was spitting he was absolutely livid I mean uh, and, and we reached the point where I heard him go if he doesn't know and I said right I'm going to go and tell him I said Bruce you've got to let him in now and um, they did the scene and it was fantastic and that electricity and atmosphere was all there and Bruce was absolutely right you know because Billy went in hating him yeah. and they did, they did that great scene and now they're great buddies and they email each other um, so he's a very shrewd operator Bruce um, 
And Julian, uh, again, I, it's very weird. I'd done a couple of pictures with him, but I'd never met him before. He, I did one years ago called Airborne, and then he did a day on We Still Still the Old Way. Mm. Um, but he was, uh, we, we never crossed paths, and he was actually the first scene that we shot on this, which set the bar very high. Yeah. Um, and obviously, you know, we were in the pandemic. He's a gentleman of advanced years. Um, and what an amazing pro he was. You know, we really started off nicely with him. Um, and I'm just so grateful, you know, all these lovely actors that want to come and do one of my movies. What more could you ask for? Yes. I'm aware. And? And I wouldn't worry about it. Wouldn't worry about it? Have you even fucking read it? Please, just forget about it. It's a fucking nuisance. And he's a liability. Are you quite finished? No. Sebastian, I'm not quite finished. Lions don't lose sleep over the opinion of sheep, John. You know that. Oh, don't give me that, Sebastian. You're our solicitor. Do something. And what exactly would you have me do? And yes, I have fucking read it. Oh, I don't know. Something. Oh, Sadie, my dear, believe me, it'll all blow over. Please stop worrying. Don't, my dear me, Sebastian. You weren't there last night. It was a fucking disaster. A disaster that ended in spontaneous applause for your husband's defiance, no less. <laughs> I mean, look, working with Billy is an honour, you know. You learn from him just talking to him. He really made an impact because he's such a good actor. Mm. Um, also, a, a disgustingly handsome man. Um, even at 79 years old, he's still a head turner. Today, there was a crowd of 50 people, you know, taking pictures of him and mm. that kind of stuff in the high street. And um, you get that level of fame as an actor by being good. That's yeah. what gives you longevity. The scene that sticks out for me is the, uh, where the car blows up. And... Um, I suppose different words say you, you look like you really enjoyed filming that because there's a shot, I think the car explodes, you're in the foreground? Yes. So, I mean, Brad Pitt wouldn't do that, you know that, don't you? Oh, really? No. <laughs> not 20 feet away from the car. No, so how was that filmed? Was it kind of... Well, it was kind of an accident. and It didn't work the first time we did it, so we had to go back a week later. <laughs> and the, me clapping at the end like that is saying, thank God we got that done. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but they kept it in as part and parcel of the character. So it's... Um, well, that's what I was going to say. It looked very natural, the way that yeah. you know, that happened. Because, you know, with yeah, the clapping. Well, well, it was natural. I was, <laughs> I was pleased to get away with getting, but without getting burned. <laughs> it's kind of, you know, the longer Friday meets your next. I'm not saying it's as good as either of those films, but those were the, the influences. Um, yeah. You know, and, and particularly in terms of Billy and Janine's characters, Bob Hoskins and Helen Mirren were definitely who they were modelled on. There are no good guys in it. There are no good guys. Um, it's a home invasion movie with gangsters. And if you like British gangster films, you will love this film. Because it has everything in it. Hell must be empty. It's all the devils are here. Sometimes in life, if you want to catch the bad guy, you have to become the bad guy. How about that for a happy family? <laughs>